What up, world? It's Fest of Reverb back in the studio, patching cables and twisting knobs with Beads by Mutable Instruments. Beads is a texture synthesizer, or put more simply, it is a granular audio processor, playback textures, technically known as grains, and do lots of other cool things. Beads is the successor to Clouds by Mutable Instruments. Uh, Clouds had the same approach to granular synthesis, albeit in a much more raw form. Beads comes equipped with an improved audio buffer with selectable audio qualities that affect the recording and the playback. Granular synthesis at its core is particles of sounds called grains. These grains are created by sampling short bits of sound, commonly referred to as seeding. Uh, the audio buffer that is recording all the time can be frozen by pressing the freeze button right here or sending a high gate signal into the freeze input right here. On beads, we can seed a grain in three different ways. Latched mode, clocked mode, or by sending in gates and triggers to the seed input right here. Its default setting when you turn it on is latched. So with, with it being latched, this seed knob is always illuminated. And to get out of latch mode, you just kind of tap it. But to get back into latch mode, you would hold it down for four seconds. In this mode, the grains are generated continuously at a rate set by this density knob right here. If you turn it clockwise, grains will be generated at a random rate. If you turn it counterclockwise, it will be generated at a more constant rate. Turning all the way clockwise increases this density to audio rates that can be tracked at one volt per octave at the density input right here. So when in clocked mode, you still have the latch mode generated where you could run a clock or a sequence into the seed input. And then this density knob turns into either a probability control when you go clockwise, going from zero to 100% probability that a grain will be generated, or you can go counterclockwise and the chances of a grain generating will be broken into 16th notes. Refer to the manual for a complete breakdown on these knob turns. So the final mode of operation is gate or trigger mode. To get into that again, just go out of latch mode by just pressing seed. And then you can only generate seeds by running a clock or a sequence into the seed input. What that does with the density knob is if you turn it clockwise, you only play one or maybe a few grains, but if you turn it counterclockwise, you start increasing your grains into audio rates. And when you get to a high audio rate, you could actually uh, track this by running a volt per octave input into the density input right here. You have pitch, time, size, and shape, and that controls the grain playback again that you just recorded. Time controls where you are in the audio buffer. So if you're all the way counterclockwise, this is the most recent recorded material. And as you go counterclockwise, you're going back in the audio buffer. Pitch controls transposition from minus 24 to plus 24 semitones or minus two to plus two octaves. Size controls the duration and playback direction of the grain. At about 10 o'clock, you start to go in reverse if you start to go more counterclockwise. And then finally, you have shape, and shape adjusts the amplitude envelope of the grain. So fully counterclockwise creates rectangular envelopes, and fully clockwise gives you more slow attacking envelopes. So finally, the creme de la creme of this module, in my opinion, are these four knobs down here that Mutable Instruments is calling attenue randomizers. You can control the amount of modulation like a normal attenuator, and you can control the amount of external modulation and how it affects the internal modulation. It's like modulating your modulation through a VCA. And even when these are not patched, you can control the amount of randomization from an internal random source that's independent per knob per parameter. And for more information on beads and other modules by Mutable Instruments, click the link below and read up on it at Reverb.com. So that's it for basic knob function and all of its different modes. If you want more detail, obviously read the manual. Uh, let's just get into some patches. So the first way I like to use beads is as a delay. It's actually one of the most basic functions. The size knob controls the size of the actual grain. But if you go all the way counterclockwise, 
you put beads into delay mode. I'm also in latch grain mode as well, and I'm just running a simple sequence I got coming, just a simple sine wave going into the LXD, and here's the dry signal. So when you're in this mode, your density knob controls your delay time, and your time knob is a multiplier based on the value set by the density knob. So if you go clockwise, you get into more of a multi-tap delay. And if you go more counterclockwise, you start getting more audio rate type delays, play with the time. But the multi-tap delay is definitely, it's definitely pretty clutch. And when you're in delay mode, these knobs turn into slow acting randomizers. So you could start playing with them on patch. Let's play with pitch, more random rate. Okay, so we're still in delay mode, same sequence but now I'm in like more of a pitch echo patch. And I did that by changing the audio quality from clean digital at first to the sunny tape mode. And also you can add more depth and make it more, more of an echo by bringing up some reverb. So this patch, I just want to demonstrate using beads as a reverb. First of all, you can use this assignable input to bring in CV control over either your feedback or your dry wet or your reverb. But in this case, we're just gonna, we're not even gonna deal with this. We're just gonna show beads as reverb algorithm and how wonderful it is. And you get different dampening based off of the audio quality setting. But if I brought in some of the grains that again is always recording, This is uh, quite an involved patch, and to create a shimmer reverb, you need to have some sort of feedback coming out of the output and going back into the input. So I did that here by splitting the output with a stackable, running into the Vails VCA, back into the input. And what that does is, it creates that shimmer because I'm also seeding grains with the clock that's in rhythm with this sequence. So if you go fully wet, so again, still the same shimmer reverb patch, but this time I'm using rings as the voice. Hope you guys don't get too mad. Got rings going into beads, just like rings will be going into clouds and lots of racks out there. If you So the third way I like to use beads is as a pitch shifter is fairly simple to just get any sort of pitch shifting going on. And to do that, I'm going to pull out my trusty Radio Shack mic that I've had for about 15, maybe even 16 years now. Run my voice into beats so you could understand, understand. how you could easily, easily do some do crazy, some crazy pitch, shifting. pitch shifting. This density now becomes either a probability control if you go clockwise 
or it has ratios of J grain generation if you go counter. You get a little time stretch in that as well. If you start playing with the time, and you can also go back in time on the audio buffer, obviously. Let's run a sample through here. So the fourth way I like to use beads is as a beat repeater or beat slicer and even to do some time stretching. Uh, I am out of latch grain generation mode. I am using a clock that, that is in time with this drum loop that I'm running through here. And that clock is generating my seeds. So I got that going into the seed input. And I'm also running this back into delay mode. So I got my size knob all the way to infinity. I got my time all the way counterclockwise so it repeats the uh, most recent grain. And I got my pitch straight up and down so, cause we're not gonna do any pitch shifting with this one. So let's go with. See, I'm at about like a half step grain generation on a density knob. So it's already doing some pretty cool repeats. And if you play with the feedback, You can get more repeats. Well, let's keep that about like nine o'clock. Obviously you could still freeze a grain. So if you freeze a grain within rhythm, you can often get some cool results as well. Now where you can get crazy is you could start to randomize your time. All right, so this next patch is uh, still in the beat repeater sort of category here, but this time I'm using beads as a beat slicer. I am out of latch grain mode uh, like we were before, but this time I am seeding with a clock that is in rhythm with my drum loop, and I'm also freezing with the clock that's in rhythm with my drum loop, and I'm using a stackable to take that same clock source that's running into my feed input and split that and feed it into my dry wet. This is dry, and as soon as I plug this in, you'll hear the slices. I could also take some random steps and go into this continue randomizer and mess with time as well. So let's do that. Getting random steps out of uh, Pamela's new workout. So the fifth and final way I like to use beads is as a wavetable oscillator. Uh, when you don't patch anything into the inputs for about 10 seconds, beads loses patience and starts granulizing a collection of internally stored buffers of raw waveforms. When you're in this mode, your feedback knob selects which one of these eight banks of waveforms is played. So you got a lot to work with. Obviously you can tune it up how you want with pitch, and then your dry wet controls the balance between the continuous oscillator signal and the grains that it's creating off of its own signals. Now, obviously you could patch all that up into a VCA. You get one volt per active control on the pitch input right here. Um, you can also do some cool things with one volt per active control on density as well, but let's just patch this up and uh, make some voices. So here's just a simple subtractive patch. 
I'm using the wavetable oscillator as my main voice, going into the cue pass. another patch showing the strength of beads as a wavetable oscillator. This patch, again, all has the main voice coming out of beads, um, feeding that into the stereo filter QPOS, and QPOS has its own VCA in there as well. So I'm getting my ASR from MAVS into the VCA of QPOS. And then for more effects, since I'm using beads as a wavetable oscillator, I'm using the Performer by Beat People and the ModBap crew for a little bit of extra delay. Well, that's all I got. Five ways I like to use beads and a few patches uh, in between all those ways. Obviously, these aren't the only ways to use beads. Um, the possibilities are almost endless with this module. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot that I missed out on and I'm sure you guys will get lots of different ideas as well. So if so, why don't you pop a comment and uh, share some of your patch ideas with us. Well, that's all I got for today. I'm Fest Grandiose, signing off with Reverb. Stay safe and keep creating. <laughs>